Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. This is episode eight, I think. I've been getting a little bit confused with the episodes. I think it's episode eight of Dog Turds Into Diamonds here with AFC Rushton and Diamonds. And we start off this season finale just on the profile of Johnny Hurd. I went back to offer him a contract again and he's retired. He's only 32. He was absolutely fantastic for us this season. He had seven assists over the course of the season. Brilliant corner taker, brilliant free kick taker. Technical ability just so far above our league. I think he could have done an excellent, excellent job for us next season. And he's decided to retire. Really, really disappointed about that. Um, so, yeah, really, um, well, moving on from there, we are going in now to the very last game of the season. Our playoff chances did die in the last episode with that defeat against Tamworth, where, as you remember, we completely dominated the game and got done by two free kicks, a total FM in. Um, we've played twice since then. And we've got two really good wins. Royston, who were fifth, and Peterborough, who were seventh. And we won both games. And you can see with those results, we have now had just one defeat in the last eight. So we're finishing the season strong. As I said last episode, I really do feel that we are the best footballing team in this division by a mile. So... Um, I'm very confident for next season. I've got really high hopes for next season that we can kind of take this league by storm. But um, in this game against Royston, so this Royston was still in with a chance of making playoffs before we played this game. And you can see we didn't even let them have a shot on target. Um, since, uh, since we had that poor run of form where we didn't win in six, we've started defending very narrow. And it seems in the majority of the games to have really sorted our defence out. You can see here Matt Richardson and Alex Collard were absolutely dominant. And it was Alex Collard who got the only goal of the game. Disappointing to only win 1-0 because we were so good and we were so dominant. Um, but I mean Richardson and Collard were just absolutely phenomenal. Fenland was playing left back with uh, Sam Warburton being suspended. That meant Williams came back in at right back and he was uh, very, very good again. Fenland superb on the left wing. Um, I think for next season with the fact that we're not getting Johnny Hurd, I think Fenland is a really, really good option maybe to play on that left wing um, if Sam, Sam Warburton is not cutting it, as he hasn't on many occasions this season. In midfield, King James was awesome again. And the South African, Mashigo, came in to get a start. And he really, really helped us in terms of just controlling the possession and dominating the chances. With his 14 pass and 11 vision, he is superb. He's, of course, on loan to us from League of Ireland, Waterford. And we have applied to extend that loan. He's got six months left on his Waterford contract. We are extending that, and uh, you can see his whole career, although he's South African, his whole career has been in England and Ireland, um, but it's with us that he made his, well, we're semi-professional, but we'll call it his professional debut, and uh, he's starting to look like a very, very good little player. So he's not costing us any money at all, no loan fee, so hopefully we can get those next six months confirmed with him to be here as a really good midfield op option. Um, Jack Brown, excellent again, as was Brown Sterling, even though he didn't score. We need him to come up with a goal or two today to try and cement his place as the golden boot winner for the season. In other news, Jordan Eli has left us. Um, so he played most of the season as one of our first choice centre-backs. But in the end, just his lack of strength, his lack of jumping reach... And his average mentals, apart from his decision making, his, uh, his, his mentals are average at best. And then with his limited technical ability outside of his heading, marking and tackling, I, uh, I just really wasn't bothered about 
confirming him for next season. Mikelova offered him a contract. So, yeah, I was quite happy to let him go at the end. I mean, his, his tackling and, and heading in particular are phenomenal. But with the weaknesses in his game, he just uh, he wasn't on good form by the time he left us. So I've let him leave. And I think we'll have different defensive options for next season. Alex Collard has picked up. And I will be trying to offer him another contract. I think I tried to offer him one, trying to get his money down. I think he earns, is it £200 a week? Um, he's on £220 a week. I think he wants £250 to renew. Um, I think I am going to do it because I haven't been able to find a better central defender um, with his characteristics like the 13 strength, 14 aggression, 12 bravery. Um, and his 11 jumping reach and 11 heading is is pretty good at our level as well. So I think I will renew. Um, I, I'm going to have to wait to have another opportunity to offer him a contract. But it's just been a real struggle to find a real next level defender. Uh, the following game, it was basically the nearest we've got in our division to a local derby against Peterborough Sports. You can see here, we won 2-1, but again, we completely dominated. I thought we might have got done again uh, the way we have on various occasions this season where um, we were 2-0 up, complete control of the game. They got one back. I thought there might be a danger of them getting another before the end of the game, but in the end, we did hold out for the win. Ravi Shamsi got the first goal. Again, he's been very, very good since signing his new contract. And the Malio Brown Sterling got his 24th of the season to keep himself at the top of the scoring charts. Williams, excellent again. Fendon had a decent game. And Matt Richardson, also excellent again. As was Jack Brown. Um, phenomenal first season for him. And you can see in goal... We did not have Dean Snegger. We have now dropped him. Uh, Tyler Ford has played the last two games. He's done okay. Nothing nothing amazing. But um, he's done all right. I mean, with his reflexes and his handling and his aerial reach and command of area, he's a solid goalkeeper for this division. He's got interest in him, actually, from, you can see, a number of clubs. And... Uh, some of these clubs are from Vanarama North and South. I'm not sure if there might be a Vanarama team in there. I think earlier in the season, he had interest from South End, who are a, a Vanarama National League team. So he's actually quite highly rated. So um, I, I, hopefully we can kind of hold on to him for next season. He's a decent backup, but he has ended the season as the first choice goalkeeper. And... If I just go in and show the squad, uh, you can see here, if we look at uh, so contracts here, Dean Snedker is our highest earner now that uh, Jay Williams has accepted a lower wage on his new contract. And um, we have confirmed now that Dean Snedker is going to be released. So uh, on £475, I just think his ability doesn't justify it. I, I don't think his handling is good enough. His one-on-ones are average at best. His reflexes are very good. But um, yeah, I think we can find a goalkeeper of similar ability at least for much less money. And I mean, I'm keeping my powder dry. I'm not going to reveal too much about transfers at the moment. We, we have made some moves for, to bring new players in for next season. One of those might be a goalkeeper. And he's certainly not going to cost £475 a week. We've also confirmed the release of Connor Furlong at £325 a week. Again, very similar to Snedka. He's got some good things about him, but I think I can't justify a £325 a week wage for him. He's only scored four and got four assists. We haven't had enough assists off of our wingers this season. So Connor Furlong is going to be allowed to move on. And that is going to save us a decent little bit of money. The other one who is leaving, confirmed to be leaving, he earns £300 a week, is Tom Lorraine. He is going to retire at the end of the season. We're going to have him on the bench for today's game. 
and uh, maybe we can give him a few minutes just to say goodbye to the fans. So um, a great AFC Rushton and Diamonds career for Tom Lorraine. You can see there, scored a lot of goals for them over the years, come up through the divisions with the team. A real AFC Rushton and Diamonds legend. He has had a decent season this season, um, 10 goals from 16 starts in all competitions. And he's actually had six man of the match awards, which is the best in our team. So I think we're saying goodbye to a legend. It is the right time to let him move on. I think we are going to have better forwards than him earning a lot less money for next season. So um, Tom Lorraine on his way out. And by confirming the departure of those three players, we are saving well over a thousand pounds a week off the wage bill. So that is huge. Alex Collard still to confirm, of course, if he leaves, we'd be saving about 1,400 a week. Be absolutely massive. At the moment, we're 150 pounds over the wage budget. But you can see committed spending for next season is about 1,100 pounds under the current wage budget. It does say here that next season's wage budget is going to drop to 3.3 thousand per week. I hope that's not true. Earlier in the season, it did tell me we were going to get 4,000 a week next season. But um, if it does drop to 3.3, well, we are still at the moment about 600 pounds under that. So we've got some good flexibility there for uh, making some deals in the summer and hopefully assuring uh, a team capable of pushing for promotion. But um, bringing that wage budget down is absolutely huge because you can see we are now nearly £90,000 in debt. We've got to get that spending under control. Um, as I've said before, I am going to release some staff members in the summer. I'll probably have a smaller coaching team. And um, I think also I probably am going to get a U18 coach for next season. Um, unfortunately, because I didn't realize that the chairman was in control of uh, the uh, the contracts, we have had a pretty large bunch of U15 of U18s signed. They're all on only five pound a week, so it's not too bad. But um, yeah, I'm one or two of them look like they're all right. So I'm going to hire a U18 coach and see if maybe some of them develop a bit. It's very difficult with us being a part-time club, but we'll see what happens there. But anyway, on to today's game. We are fifth in the Southern League Premier Central Division. And um, you can see we've got no chance of making the playoffs now. We need to win to guarantee fifth place. So I would like to finish as high as possible. Um, with our wins over Royston and Peterborough Sports in the last two games, we've moved above them both. We can't catch St. Ives. You can see that Bromsgrove Sporting are confirmed as the champions. They go up to the Vanarama North or South automatically. Hensford are guaranteed a playoff place. And Tamworth and St. Ives are battling out for that last place. St. Ives play Bromsgrove Sporting in their last game. So really tough for them. But then Tamworth are also away at Hensford. So real, uh, real excitement for the last playoff place there. We are up against Stourbridge, who are guaranteed safety. They've got nothing to play for down there in 16th place. So hopefully we can get the result we need to just finish fifth and finish strongly. And um, this is the team that's going to start. Now, first of all, I said at the start of the season when we signed him that this would be my intention. The romantic in me is giving a, I'm going to say professional, even though we're not a professional club, a professional debut for Paul Willis, 36-year-old um, Northern Irish. He has been, so I'm pretty sure he's played games for AFC Liverpool. I'm pretty sure, but with them being in such a low division, it hasn't registered here in his uh, his career history. Um, but uh, he was apparently only there for one season. Again, I don't think that's true. I think he's been at AFC Liverpool for maybe for a while, but just because of how low they they play, 
we don't see it here on his, his career stats. But um, officially, he has not had a club in 12 years, now 13 years, from 2009 to 2022. Product of Liverpool's academy, never played a professional game. He is going to debut today. And I have actually had a little bit of a look on him uh, online. And he's quite a big lad. Um, I searched his name and actually found an article that, that was titled, Fat Goalkeepers, Are They a Dying Breed? And there was a photo of Mr. Paul Willis there. Um, yeah, he's a bit of a big lad. Um, you see, it says he's 10 stone 12. He ain't 10 stone 12. Look up his name online and you will see he is definitely not 10 stone 12. So he is getting his professional football debut today. Absolutely delighted for him. Um, it says there in the reserves, playing for the U18s this season, he has had 27 clean sheets. Most of those are because he has only started three games, you can see. He's had 31 games off the bench where he's not played many minutes. He starts, Jim Fenlon will play right back and Jay Williams partners Alex Collard at centre-back. That is because Matt Richardson is suspended. So Warburton comes back in at left-back. Waddington and James are in the centre of midfield. Um, Waddington is a little bit better in terms of his passing and vision. So I'm letting him be the box-to-box -box midfielder. King James will just sit and hold a little bit. He's also got a little bit better tackling. Um, Joel Giassi will play on the right. He's finished the season pretty strong. I'm still not sure whether I'll keep him on for next season or not. Ravi Shamsi on the left, who is in good form. And Mashigo is going to start as the number 10, the South African. That is because I've dropped Jack Brown to the bench. Why, you ask? He has been on absolutely sensational form the last five games. 7.74 rating, three goals and two assists. I'm dropping him because he has 25 goal... Uh, sorry, how many... Is, is my math's messing up. He's got 29 goal involvements for the season. 24 goal involvements in the league. If he gets one more goal or assist... We have to pay him a thousand pounds bonus. So, as this is the last game of the season, we've got nothing to play for. I've dropped him to the bench. I think we don't need to add another thousand to our eighty-seven thousand pounds worth of debt. So, he will only come on if it is absolutely necessary. Um, Jack Brown will start on the bench, and Demario Brown Sterling starts up front. He is one goal ahead in the, the race for the golden boot right now. Uh, hopefully he can have a great game and break that, uh, or not break the record, but set the record and win the golden boot. And maybe that can give us the opportunity to bring Tom Lorraine off the bench to say goodbye to the fans. The other subs, we've got no defenders on the bench, no defenders available. So Tyler Ford is on the bench. Jamie O'Hara, a midfield option with Jack Brown. Nyan Missouria and Connor Furlong, the wing options. Tom Lorraine and Cool Thirst are our substitute strikers. So that is how we line up. Let's get into this because, as always, I have spoken a hell of a lot. Let's get into this game. So they are playing a 4 3 3. I think our formation handles that quite nicely. Um, perfectly confident with what we've got going into this. I really do feel like now we are defending much better. Um, I am still going to look for a, a, a really good central defence option in the summer. But I kind of feel like um, if it is necessary, we can go ahead with the team that we've got and still have a really good chance for next season. I've actually forgotten to show you, but when we finish this game, I will quickly show you the um, defensive uh, defensive stats and the defensive analysis for the season because it is quite telling. All right, let's pump fists here. What do we want to go? Um, okay, go and give the fans an appropriate send-off for all the support they've given you this season. I'm betting the players could not care less about the fans. Let's find out. Only Alex Collard. That's why he's the captain. 
That's why he's the captain. Nobody else reacts. The midfielders, there you go. We've got some motivation out of our midfielders and some of the defenders have reacted there as well. And we've got Demario Brown Sterling motivated as well. Absolutely superb. Let's really get into Stourbridge here. Let's really give him a good hiding and send the fans home happy for the rest of the summer, hopefully, as they get an early chance. Paul Willis, not affected by that header. And they have now got another opportunity. We have really conceded a lot of free kicks this season. And that one's off the post. Paul Willis was left standing and watching. And they are dominating the first few minutes here. Paul Willis with a great save. But Jason Cowley, who is actually one of the best strikers in the league. I think he's in third place in the scoring charts. I think I'm right in saying that. Willis did really well to save there. And Cowley unmarked. We've had a disastrous start to the game. Can we now start to get a hold of this? Really, really poor start. Especially as we've been playing so well coming into this game. I'm going to berate the players. Fortunately, they've reacted well. All right, what do we change here? Because this is not working at all. I'm going to go attacking. And I'm going to ask the players to be more expressive. We are starting to come into this game a little bit now. Let's get them to be more expressive. And what else can we do here? Um, do we? I'm going to stop playing out to the fullbacks. I'm going to play into our playmaker. The fullbacks have got attacking forwards on top of them. So maybe playing into them is not the best idea. As we now get our first highlight of the game. Can we create something here? We get in down the line with Giassi. Great ball in. Brown Sterling has his shot blocked. He was well marked there. It goes back in. And Waddington heads wide. Can we now really start to get a foothold in this game? We have now had as many shots as them. And we do have the, the possession. As we now get a corner. King James putting it in. And Demario Brown Sterling gets goal number 25 for the season. Will he finish up with the golden boot? Nice to get the equaliser before half time. Just those strikers' instincts there at the back post. Let's give him a little bit of praise for that. No, they didn't like the praise at all. As we get another corner, can we go into half time ahead? Waddington, can you get it back in? Now James, Jim Fenlon, it's a great hit from distance there from Jim Fenlon. Wasn't expecting that from him. And, well, we finished the half strongly. Let's tell them we can do this. Keep going. We can win this if we work hard. Only Demalio Brown Sterling reacts. Will the rest of them? You have the ability to make the difference. Nobody cares. Oh dear, oh dear. Now the defenders react a little bit. Let's see if we can just push on this second half. Finish the season strongly. I want that fifth place. Want to finish as high as possible. I really want to take that confidence into next season that maybe we can really take hold of this league. That's a really nice move. And Brown Sterling should have done better than that. Hits it straight into Hill. Let's demand more from the players. As we get a free kick with James. We are now dominating. And Brown Sterling off the bar. His finishing, his technical finishing ability. It has cost him. He is a little bit below his XG for the season. I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to bring Mashigo off. And I'm going to go two up front. I'm not going to bring Tom Lorraine on yet. Cool Thirst is going to come on. And this is a partnership that I want to develop for next season. Let's play him perhaps as the as a target forward or a deep line forward. I think we might go in as a... Do I want to go... I'm going to go target forward. Just trying to get the opportunity for Brown Sterling to play off him. Now... Shamsi and Giassi have been poor. 
do I make changes? I'm, they're both on a booking as well. I'm going to make that the only change for the moment. Let's see if Shaq Coulthurst playing his second game for AFC Russian and Diamonds. Let's see if he can have an impact here. Let's demand more of the team. King James. We've had a lot of set pieces this game. But it's headed away and then got away by Porsche. Can we get it back in? We can. Joel Gyasi dropping deep for it. He's got Fenlon there who sends him away down the wing. Can we get this in? Again, the cross is well defended. But it's not away yet. We're just mounting so much pressure on them. Gyasi and Joel Gyasi gets his goal. Is that the goal that convinces me to keep him around for next season? I'm not planning to play with wingers next season, but I do want to keep some wingers in the squad to have that option. And maybe with Gyasi and Ravi Shamsi and then Nyan as well, maybe we've got the players to do that. That's nice. Let's praise the players. And, let's, and again, they've reacted badly to being praised. I mean, I've... I usually like being praised, but they're not uh, they're not keen on it. Not keen on it here at AFC Russian and Diamonds. Last couple of minutes. What changes can we make here? Again, I think Ravi Shamsi has been poor. Let's give him a change here. Let's should we give Connor Furlong a goodbye as well? I'm gonna give Curlo Connor Furlong even a goodbye for the team. And Tom Lorraine, the romantic in me, is in full effect today Paul Willis getting his professional debut at 36 years old Tom Lorraine and Connor Furlong get to say goodbye to the fans let's see if any of them can have a, a hero's goodbye here or maybe we just keep Paul Willis around for next season as the third choice goalkeeper as well give him another year Let's just do a little bit of time wasting to see this one out, hopefully. I'm going to go disciplined with the ball. And we're just going to hold shape there. Let's encourage the players just to finish the game. And again, they don't like being encouraged or praised today. But we have had a good, strong finish to the season. Three wins on the bounce I think we've had what six wins in our last eight games which has been quite pleasing six wins and a draw so we finished the season strongly maybe in terms of ratings it wasn't the greatest game today but I mean we did have the better of the game in the end I think we were deserved winners very pleased with that we finished the season with a good positive result, we guarantee fifth place in the league. I really do think we are going to be so much better than them next season or better than the rest of the league next season. I really think we can have a major, major push to go up automatically next season. And um, before we sign off here, the next episode will just be a little roundup of the season and also maybe a little bit of a look at what we're looking to do in the transfer market but all i wanted to do you can see there saint ives in the end got the victory over bromsgrove sporting to get the the second playoff spot tamworth miss out i wonder if that means maybe some players from tamworth might be available to poach um certainly uh, i'm gonna look at royston and peterborough sports um I would like to look at Cowley at Stourbridge as well. Um, you can see here, I mean, there are a couple of things there that are not fully available to see, but you can see he is an absolutely sensational player for our level. He scored 20 goals this season. What does he want to sign? So he doesn't believe AFC Russian and Diamond squad is strong enough to play at a level matching his ambitions. Um, or seen as we've just beaten your team and we finished fifth in the league, um, I'm going to say you're a bit full of uh, beep, Mr. Cowley. But yeah, the, the only thing I wanted to show you, I did mean to do it beforehand, as we've got a, a bunch of players finishing their 
trials here, basically players that we looked at and they weren't really good enough. Um, so um, we cancelled those. Now I'm going to go into the data hub just to finish this the episode and the season. Now you can see here a couple of things. If we look at general analysis, so th here's the overview. You can see in terms of all the major stats in terms of uh, XG, in terms of passing percentage, in terms of shot percentage, shots per game, all the attacking stats, we have been sensational this season. Sensational. Um, now, chances conceded per game is also not very good. But in terms of with the ball, with the possession, we have been very, very good this season. But if we look at defending, here you see the problem. Here you see why we finished fifth rather than going up. We are by far the worst team in the league with fewer blocks and fewer clearances. Now that speaks to our lack of tackling, our lack of aggression, maybe our lack of strength. So, I mean, really, we identified it during the season and we did bring in players like Waddington, King James, Fenland. We brought players in that we thought would help us in that regard, but we are still way, way short of the rest of the league in that. You can see Royston Town were actually the best in terms of their, their blocks and clearances. So you can see really why we've ended up not achieving the success we needed. In terms of our passing, lots of passes and accurate passes, we're up there with the best of them. And um, so, I mean, with the ball, I do feel like we are the best ball playing team in the league. Again, the attacking, we are above the league average in absolutely everything. Really, really positive with the ball. And um, so, yeah, I, th I think there you can kind of see um, in terms of movement as well, lots of lots of dribbles way, way out in front of any other team in the league. I just think with the ball, we have been fantastic, really, really pleased with the season in terms of the style of football that we have played. But um, we do now have to sort out this defence. So um, congratulations to Paul Willis for getting his debut and being on the winning side. The next episode, as I say, it will just be a very, very brief. I say brief. I speak so much that it probably won't be brief, but a brief roundup of the season um, when the uh, end of season awards come in. And then after that, we will be back for season two when we will reveal all of our new signings and all of our transfer dealings. For now, thank you very, very much. If you have been watching this first season, um, drop a like subscribe to the, 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 the channel, help us grow. And we will see you very soon for the season roundup and just a little chat about how we are planning to build the squad for next season. See you very soon.